Okay, so which of these weightlifts is more powerful? So the guy on the left who lifts 130 kilograms up one meter uh, in 0 0.50 seconds, or the guy on the right who's lifting a heavier mass, which is 150 kilograms uh, up a higher height, which is 1.2 meters, um, but takes a bit longer, 0 0.70 seconds. So in terms of energy transferred, we can figure that out because the work that they're doing is against the force of gravity. So that means they, the, the mass are gaining gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy on the left is 1,275. On the right is 1,766. So the guy on the right is transferring more energy. However, power is about how quickly you transfer that energy. So if we want to calculate how quickly the energy is transferred, we have to divide the energy by time. So guy on the left is transferring 2,550 joules per second, while the guy on the right is only transferring 2,520 joules per second. So it turns out the guy on the left is more powerful. That's because he's transferring more energy per unit time, which is what power is. Okay, so power is a rate of transfer of energy. It's how quickly the energy is transferred, or the energy transferred per unit time. The equation is power equals energy over time, where energy here is measured in joules. And you can use any type of energy. You can use gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, work done, and so on. Time is going to be measured in seconds and power in watts. Okay, so watts, one watt equals one joule of energy transferred per second. Okay, man pushes the box by applying a constant force 120 newton over a horizontal distance of 30 meters. It takes him two minutes to do this. Determine the rate at which the man d did work. The rate at which the man did work. So that's how quickly he's transferring energy. That's the power. So power is equal to energy over time. So that's what we're trying to find. But the problem is we don't have any energy here. So however, we do have, we have the time, but we have the force and distance wall. So we can use work done instead of energy. So this is, uh, we can use work done equals force times distance. So that becomes force times distance over time. That force is 120 times the distance over time, two minutes, but we have to turn that into seconds. And if we calculate that, you get 30 watts. 30 joules of energy is transferred by this person per second. A sprinter's muscle can generate an average power of 900 watts. Okay, he starts at rest and it takes him 10.8 seconds to complete a sprint on a horizontal track. So straight away, I've now I've got power here and I've got time here. So I know that power times time will give me the energy. So it's transferring 900 joules per second. So if I times that by the seconds, which is 10.8, I get an energy of 9,720 joules that is going to transfer over this sprint. So his mass is um, 75 kilograms, calculate the maximum possible speed of the sprinter. Okay, so he's on a horizontal track, so that means we can ignore any gravitation potential energy. And we're trying to find the maximum possible speed. So that means we're ignoring any energy displayed uh, due to work done against air resistance and so on. So we're going to make this equal to the kinetic energy of the person, half mv squared. Okay, so we know the mass is 75, so I'm going to just rearrange this. 9,020. And multiply by the 2 divided by the mass, which is 75, and then square root it to get the velocity. And that gives me 16.1 meters per second, which is much higher than the current record. And the reason for this is because we've ignored any dissipated energy. So in reality, the actual speed that it can go is going to be lower than this.